Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to um, give a brief introduction to um, uh, latent semantic indexing. It is a way to um, find out um, a query vector. Uh, so um, among the documents like Google web pages, uh, then you have certain keyword and did you find, uh, find the most relevant document out of it. Um, this is a linear based method that has been a while ago. And these days we can have nonlinear methods based on neural networks, but nevertheless, I think it's a, a useful uh, technique that actually gives you a basic uh, foundation of the conceptual issues arising from this uh, technique. Um, so it's a paper based on um, a while ago. Um, let me show you here. Uh, by Dioeste, Dume, Furness, and Landauer, uh, and Harshman, uh, indexing by latent semantic analysis. And uh, this was in the 90s. Uh, and then there was a follow up paper uh, by Suzanne Dume, one of the authors of the original paper in the Siam Journal. Uh, and uh, uh, let me just uh, give you a brief idea of what. The paper does. Okay, so um, these are the two papers, and basically it uses uh, some of the eigenvalue analysis, singular value decomposition of the text documents, and uh, and then when you have a search vector, uh, it tries to find the closest one. So, and the main idea is that uh, if you have a document vector, so here a bunch of words that you have in this row dimension, and on the column you have document, document one, document two, document three, you can use a technique called singular value decomposition. It basically pulls out a diagonal matrix of uh, uh, eigenvalues and then the left and right eigenvectors. Um, uh, a similar term like. Okay. And then what it does is that um, there's a long derivation in the paper, but if you have this, um, you can use the full, but oftentimes people like to approximate if they're, let's say, 1,000 eigenvectors. Um, we don't want to use all of them. Um, so then, let's say, the first uh, largest 100 eigenvalues, just set them to non-zero, and then the rest of them to zero. So if we knock out all this, this white parts, then use only the black block here and this, this to do the analysis. So let's call this S2, U2, and of V2. So if you have, so this is the construction of this. So the A matrix um, um, originally, and then you convert it to a square matrix, um, will basically become a reconstructed approximate document. And then using that, what you can do is that use the U2, then the inverse of this diagonal matrix, which is the inverse of each diagonal element, uh, multiply by a query vector will get you the Q2, then you can measure the cosine theta for it. All right. Okay, so that is very simple, isn't it? Uh, so here's an example in the paper. Um, so um, there are, let's say, these kind of um, books published by Siam. So there are a whole number of books. Okay. And then these books can be converted into whether it contains certain word or not, can be have a list of these vocabularies that we care. Okay. Um, um, we could have all the vocabularies used or just the most frequently occurring one or the many ways of doing it, the document. And then here are the whole bunch of books. And if it's zero, if the title doesn't contain a particular word and, uh, if, uh, and one if it does contain, so equation is here, so it's one. Integral is here, so it's here, isn't it? So in like that. So what then we do is that, well, we do the singular value decomposition and we happen to use the K dimension of two and then have the query vector of application and theory. And you will see here application and theory. Um, it's one here. And then the U2 vector, remember this thing here? And then the inverse of S, which is this here, the two, eigen, two largest eigenvectors, multiply this two, um, will get you a query vector. And here are all the directions of these vectors. The query vector is here. 
and uh, it will get the books that are closest. Okay, and it will fit the K by two. You can see which books are called closest. These are further away from this. So which aligns with the query vector the closest? It's basically it's trying to find. Okay, so this is a simple, quick explanation of the latent semantic indexing. Thank you for watching this episode.